Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we'll be looking at the uncontested cranium king of the dinosaur world. Thank you to John Burgoyne688 for today's topic, the Taurosaurus. The earliest remains of Taurosaurus were first discovered by paleontologist John Bell Hatcher, who at the time was under the employment of paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh. These remains were discovered in the modern-day United States, specifically the state of Wyoming in the eastern county of Neobrara. Additional remains would later be found in more southern states, including New Mexico and Texas, as well as southern regions of Canada. While broad in location, Taurosaurus is notably more rare than other members of its family, including the famous three-horned Triceratops. Speaking of, it's virtually impossible to discuss Taurosaurus without discussing its relation to Triceratops. Taurosaurus, stop me if you've heard this one before, may not have been its own genus. Join the club, buddy. This debate is long, convoluted, and quite frankly bobbles back and forth quite a bit. So I'll just hit the most relevant points for this video. While the two genus have their own unique distinctions, the many similarities between the two is inarguably somewhat odd. Taurosaurus and Triceratops both lived in the same time period, in the same locations, and had fairly similar skeletal structures. Fossil records also did not aid in Taurosaurus' case, as no juvenile fossils have ever been discovered moving into 2009, with Triceratops having multiple juvenile specimens recovered. To answer these oddities, in 2009, paleontologist John Scanella would propose the hypothesis that Taurosaurus and Triceratops were not unique dinosaurs but instead growth stages of the same dinosaur. This theory suggested that Taurosaurus was a fully mature Triceratops, but to stay in line with taxonomy naming standards, the name Triceratops would be kept, while Taurosaurus would only be considered a synonym instead. A 2010 study written by Scanella and his mentor, paleontologist Jack Horner, would further support this theory which analyzed growth patterns for Triceratops and Taurosaurus. Their study would highlight the unique bone type of these dinosaurs' skulls, metaplastic bone. Metaplastic is unique in its ability to lengthen and shorten to form new shapes and sizes, seemingly explaining how the solid frill of Triceratops would expand and reform into the double-holed skull of Taurosaurus. All this evidence seems bone solid. Eh? Oh, eh, that's fair. But this hypothesis has not been openly accepted by all paleontologists in the field. In particular, three main questions have been raised to challenge this hypothesis. One is size. The theory that Taurosaurus is a fully mature Triceratops conflicts with the ranges of size that have been found among Taurosaurus specimens. While no juveniles have ever been found, skeletons can range between 25 feet or 7.5 meters to 30 feet or 9 meters in length, a fairly large range considering they should be fully grown by the time they reach this Taurosaurus stage. Another noted flaw was the lack of fossils. Taurosaurus specimens are considered rare especially compared to many others of their own group, and in particular Triceratops. So believing this theory brings up the question, why would fully mature dinosaurs of this genus be so rare? Seemingly, the age representation should be fairly comparable, and not be so disproportionately favoring the younger stages of life. Finally, was the lack of a transitional stage between the skull of Triceratops and Taurosaurus. In the case of the frill holes, such a drastic development change could not occur overnight. 
So logically, there should be some specimens exhibiting a transitioning phase, with smaller holes in the skull that would gradually progress into a typical Torosaurus. These collections of issues, among others, have led some to arguing against this hypothesis. Various paleontologists, like Andrew Fark in 2011 and Nicholas Longrich in 2012, would conduct their own studies to challenge the findings of Horner and Scanella. But as of now, there is no clear answer to this debate. Similar to how we treated Tarbosaurus, for the sake of this video and to cut down on confusion, we will use the name Taurosaurus when referring to this dinosaur. Currently, there is only one widely recognized species of Taurosaurus, that being Taurosaurus latus. There is technically a second, Taurosaurus utahensis, but it has been questioned as a true species, so we'll just stick with latus. The name Taurosaurus is actually just as confusing as its relation to Triceratops. Well, maybe not that bad, but it's weird in its own ways. While its name certainly translates to Latin, with the word Soros for lizard in the second half of its name, the first half is not as obvious. The name is often translated as bull from the Latin noun Taurus and the Spanish word Toro. But some instead believe the name stems from the Latin verb torio, meaning to perforate, which is a fancy word to say penetrate or make a hole in. Both translations seemingly make some sense, as bulls are lumbering horned animals like the Taurosaurus, and to perforate could be in reference to the holes in its skull. Unfortunately, Marsh never wrote in his paper why he chose this name, and we can't ask him because he's super dead. The species name of Lattice is a bit easier to figure out, translating to the Wide One, which once again references the wide gaps in its skull. Taurosaurus belonged to the Ornithischian, or bird-hipped, dinosaurs. More specifically, Taurosaurus was a Ceratopsian, a diverse group of herbivorous dinosaurs that lived throughout modern-day North America, Europe, and Asia. The Ceratopsians came in a variety of sizes, from the tiny hornless Satacosaurus to the moderately sized Protoceratops and the giant horned Triceratops. Specifically, Taurosaurus belonged to the Ceratopsidae, a family of Ceratopsians recognized for their large sizes and massive horns. Among Ceratopsidae members, Taurosaurus was one of the largest, ranging between 25 to 27 feet, or 8 to 8.5 meters in length, and reaching 7 to 8 feet, or 2 to 2.5 meters in height. Based on this size, Taurosaurus would have weighed an astounding 6 to 7 tons about the same as an average male African bush elephant. The skull was not just remarkable within its own family, but also among dinosaurs and the animal kingdom as a whole. Taurosaurus has the honor of one of the largest skulls of any terrestrial land animal, with the largest skull, nicknamed Adam, reaching nearly 10 feet or 3 meters in length. While impressive in its own right, this may technically not be the longest skull, as the Oklahoma Natural History Museum houses a fellow Ceratopsian, Pentaceratops, with a 10.6 feet or 3.2 meter long skull, ever so slightly longer than Adam. However, any articles discussing Adam like to claim that it's the largest, so this record may not be as definitive as it might appear. Taking a closer look at this skull, certainly one of the most distinct features would be its wide holes in its frill, often referred to as fenestrae. These holes would be covered in skin and were meant to lighten the skull and make movement easier. Due to its excessive length, a skull made of pure bone would be unreasonably heavy, so these holes would allow the frill to maintain its length while not placing a burden on the animal. 
the frill most likely would have served a dual purpose, both protecting the animal's neck from predators, as well as being used for display to intimidate rivals or to attract mates of their own species. The horn arrangement of Taurosaurus was very similar to that of Triceratops, with two longer horns just above their eyes and a much smaller horn just above their nostrils. These horns, particularly the eye horns, which could reach almost 4 feet or 1.2 meters in length, would be similar to the frill, serving a dual purpose of defense against predators as well as a deterrent for rivals. Taurosaurus would have had a large beak at the front of its mouth, followed by rows of powerful teeth ideal for grinding down tough vegetation. The body of Taurosaurus was fairly bulky, held up by four powerful legs. The positioning of the legs were very similar to that of modern-day rhinos, with their forelimbs slightly splayed to the side, while their hind limbs were directly under their bodies. These legs, while strong, did not permit this animal to reach high speeds, likely resorting to a slow trot. For this reason, running was not an option, and they would instead rely on their power and lethal defenses for protection. Its tail would have been approximately 2 meters in length, and would serve as a counterbalance to its large head. Taurosaurus would have lived during the late Cretaceous, about 70 million years ago. Based on fossil location, Taurosaurus would have lived throughout North America, particularly the western United States and southern regions of Canada. During this time, North America would be a lush environment consisting of coastal swamps and dense forests, ideal for the grazing lifestyle of these creatures. Limited fossils make behavior difficult to determine for this dinosaur, but based on related ceratopsians, it is likely Taurosaurus would have lived in herds for protection. Their large size and tendency to herd would make them fairly immune to predation, but it is likely Tyrannosaurus rex would be their largest threat at the time. They would have also lived alongside gentler animals like the Edmontosaurus, Ankylosaurus, and fellow Ceratopsian, Triceratops. Despite outsizing Triceratops, Taurosaurus has certainly been outshined in terms of pop culture relevance. Taurosaurus has had no major appearances in media, only relegated to supporting or minor roles, including 1999's documentary Walking with Dinosaurs, 2005 animated show Dinosaur King, and 2020 kind of documentary, kind of reality show Dino Hunters. Jurassic Park has been considerably more generous, particularly in video games. Featuring the beast in Jurassic Park games like 2003's Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, 2012's Jurassic Park Builder, as well as 2018's Jurassic World Evolution, as well as its sequel. The Taurosaurus has always had to struggle to exist, not just when it lived, but also in the world of paleontology today. Despite its contention as a true dinosaur, its size and power make, whatever it is, a fearsome dinosaur worthy of recognition. Whether it ends up as a Taurosaurus or a Triceratops, this dinosaur proves itself to be a Tauro de Force. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Taurosaurus, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. Sorting through the ups and downs of the Triceratops debate was a real headache in the script department. I had to cut out a lot, so if you are curious, I'll link an excellent article in the description below from the Smithsonian regarding this debate. Fair warning, it's a lot. Regardless, next week we'll be looking into the fiery feathered carnivore Pyroraptor. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.